Hello and welcome to the Disabilities and Accommodations 101 workshop brought to you by the Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences Office of Disability Services. Within this workshop, we will talk about disabilities and accommodations within Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences. It will also include information on confidentiality and self-advocacy. So if you have a disability but haven't applied for accommodations yet, think you have a disability, or know someone who has a disability, then keep listening. A lot of the information within this workshop has come from the Rutgers Office of Disability Services websites and the Guide to Assisting Students with Disabilities, Equal Access in Health Science and Professional Education by Lisa M. Meeks and Nira R. Jane. A full list of references can be found at the end of the workshop as well. We are going to start off this workshop by talking about what exactly a disability is, as defined by the Americans with Disabilities Act that was amended in 2008. According to the American with Disabilities Act, or the ADA, a disability is a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities, a record of such an impairment, or being regarded as having such an impairment. But what exactly does that mean? In order to be eligible for accommodations because of a disability, the disability has to limit a major life activity like breathing, walking, talking, hearing, seeing, eating, learning, reading, concentrating, or thinking. However, even if you use auxiliary aids like a sign language interpreter or take medication, you could still be considered a person with a disability because the major life activity is still affected. The definition also includes those who have a record of or are regarded as an individual with a disability. So what does that mean? Having a record of a disability means you may have had a disability, but it is no longer present or does not limit a major life activity. Being regarded as someone with a disability means that you may not have an impairment that limits a major life activity, but others may assume you have a disability for a variety of reasons. Surgical scars or burns are examples of something that impacts your appearance, but does not limit a major life activity. Although having a record of or being regarded as an individual with a disability does not make you eligible for accommodations since no major life activities are impacted, you are still protected from discrimination under the Americans with Disabilities Act that was amended in 2008. Now that we have talked about the definition of a disability, we are going to discuss some different types of disabilities. There are a variety of different disabilities, which can include learning, psychological, physical, and intellectual disabilities. Autism, chronic illnesses, hearing loss and deafness, speech and language disorders, vision loss and blindness, traumatic brain injuries, and memory loss are considered disabilities as well. Many of these disabilities are often easy to see and understand especially if they have been impacting you your entire life, like a physical or hearing disability. However, some disabilities are considered hidden or invisible because they are not apparent. This includes learning and psychological disabilities. Physical disabilities often impact someone for all or most of their life and are usually not considered hidden disabilities. Someone can be born with a physical disability or acquire one later on in life. A physical disability is one that affects or limits a major life activity that is physical, such as walking. Some physical disabilities are due to muscular or bone impairments, diseases, or degeneration. This includes loss or impairment of limbs, such as amputation, osteogenesis imperfecta, which is a disorder characterized by fragile bones, muscular dystrophy or progressive loss of muscle strength, and arthritis, which refers to joint pain or disease. Other physical disabilities are due to diseases, degeneration, or disorder of the nervous system. This includes cerebral palsy, which is loss or impairment of motor function due to brain damage, spina bifida, or birth defect that causes a baby's spinal cord to not develop correctly, and multiple sclerosis, which is a disease of the brain and spinal cord that impacts the nerves. Paraplegia, which is the impairment in motor or sensory function of the lower extremities, and quadriplegia, which is the impairment in motor or sensory function of all four limbs, are also physical disabilities due to diseases or disorders of the nervous system, and more specifically, the spine. Finally, polyomyelitis is a viral disease that can affect the central nervous system and cause temporary or permanent paralysis. 
On this slide is also a list of references for various physical disabilities. They include websites for the Arthritis Foundation, New Jersey's chapter, the Cerebral Palsy League, the Cerebral Palsy of North Jersey, the Muscular Dystrophy Association, the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, New Jersey's Metro chapter, the Spina Bifida Resource Network, and the Christopher and Dana Reeve Paralysis Resource Center. All of the resources for physical disabilities are also included at the end of the presentation on slide 17, which is called Other Resources. Some students discover they have a learning disability before college, in elementary, middle, or high school. However, this is not the case for all students, and it may be difficult to figure out if you have a learning disability or not. Generally speaking, people with learning disabilities are of average or above average intelligence. There often appears to be a gap between the individual's potential and actual achievement. This is why learning disabilities are referred to as hidden disabilities, since the person may not look like they have a disability, but they may be unable to demonstrate the skill level expected from someone of a similar age. Therefore, if you believe that your learning or academic related skills are at a different skill level than those of your peers, or if there is a difference in your potential and actual achievement, then you may have a learning disability and may want to be evaluated. According to the Learning Disabilities Association of America, learning disabilities are neurologically based processing differences. These processing differences can interfere with learning basic skills, such as reading, writing, and or math. They can also interfere with executive functioning skills, such as organization, time planning, abstract reasoning, long or short-term memory, and attention. Examples of learning disabilities are oratory processing disorder, dyscalculia, dysgraphia, dyslexia, language process disorder, nonverbal learning disabilities, and visual perceptual or visual motor deficit. Specific learning disabilities in math, reading, or writing are other common learning disabilities. ADHD, ADD, and dyspraxia are related to learning disabilities as well. You can learn more about all of these disabilities and strategies to manage them through the Learning Disabilities Association of America and their website, which is located on this slide and at the end of the workshop. Other resources you can use for learning disabilities include the Learning Disabilities Association of New Jersey and the National Center for Learning Disabilities. The links for all three of these sources are included on the current slide. All of the resources for learning disabilities are also included at the end of the presentation on slide 18, which is called Other Resources Continued. A psychological disability is another type of disability that is often invisible and sometimes begins during college. Some examples of these disabilities are generalized anxiety disorder, depression, bipolar disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenia, and eating disorders. Each of these psychological disabilities has its own symptoms, which may vary for each person. You can learn more about each disability from the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and the link is included on the current slide. The Mental Health Association in New Jersey and Mental Health Resources for College Students are two other resources that may be useful, and the links are included on the current slide as well. All of the resources for psychological disabilities are also included at the end of the presentation on slide 18, which is called Other Resources Continued. Rutgers University provides many resources for its students who have or may have psychological disabilities. This includes the University Behavioral Health Care, UBHC, and the Graduate School of Applied and Professional Psychology, GAZAP, where you can learn more about behavioral health care and evaluations. The websites for these resources are located on the current slide. The links for UBHC and GAZAP are also at the end of the presentation on slide 16, which is called Rutgers Resources. Please keep in mind that the Office of Disability Services cannot evaluate you, but rather can help determine the reasonable accommodations for you once you are evaluated by the appropriate professional. If you, your child, or someone you know had disability accommodations in elementary, middle, or high school, then you might know that the school is required to provide you with a free, appropriate public education, or FAPE, by law. However, the law changes once you enter college, and it is now up to you to advocate for yourself. 
Self-advocacy involves knowing yourself, your disability, and how it impacts your life at home and at college. It also means that you are in charge of knowing and utilizing your resources, so it is important to advocate for yourself in order to receive accommodations. Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences, ODS, works with you to determine reasonable accommodations. But remember, it is still up to you to advocate for yourself. The first step is to self-identify to the Office of Disability Services as a student with a disability to apply for accommodations. Self-identification means you are informing RBHS ODS that you are an individual with a disability and are requesting accommodations. Once you self-identify as a student with a disability, apply for accommodations, and are approved, then you will be able to receive accommodations that are appropriate, reasonable, and supported by your documentation. I will talk later about what happens if you are not approved for disability accommodations. Please also note that accommodations are not retroactive, which means that they cannot be applied to any previous or current courses until you are approved for accommodations. However, self-advocacy does not stop at being approved for accommodations. You must continue to advocate for yourself throughout your time at RBHS. It is your responsibility to inform each of your professors of your accommodations by providing them with your letter of accommodations and discussing the accommodations with them. Dental students will have to inform their academic affairs office instead of their individual professors. Furthermore, if you feel that there are any issues of concern related to your disability during your RBHS experience, please advocate for yourself and inform the Office of Disability Services right away. Remember, self-advocacy means that you are in charge of your resources, and this may not end once you are approved for accommodations. The Office of Civil Rights through the Department of Education also has a transition guide and answers many questions for students with disabilities who are now in college. The link is on the current slide and at the end of the presentation on slide 18, which is called Other Resources Continued. If you have a disability and are not sure about applying for accommodations because of confidentiality issues, Please keep in mind that the RBHS Office of Disability Services is committed to ensuring that all information regarding a student is maintained confidentially as required or permitted by law. Procedures for handling student information have been adopted by Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences ODS and are followed by the staff of ODS. Students are informed of their confidentiality rights during their first meeting with the Office of Disability Services. Your information obtained by Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences Office of Disability Services will only be shared with others within the institution on a need-to-know basis. Only the Disability Services staff has immediate access to your files and records. For example, with the student's permission, university faculty and staff may be informed of the student's accommodations, but not their disability or diagnosis. Information in your ODS file will not be released except in accordance with federal and state laws, which require release if a student states that they intend to harm themselves or another person, reports or describes any physical abuse, neglect, or sexual abuse of children or vulnerable adults within the last three years, reports the use of an illegal drug for non-medical purpose during pregnancy, or reports or describes sexual exploitation by counseling or health care professionals. However, your file may be released pursuant to a court order or subpoena. You may also give written authorization for the release of information if you wish to share it with others. Information will not be released without consent unless required by federal or state law. ODS will not release information to a student, outside agency, parent, or others that was obtained directly from a third party. The student, outside agency, parent, or others will need to obtain the documentation, records, or information directly from the third party who originally supplied the information. Now that we have talked about what a disability is, different types of disabilities, self-advocacy, and confidentiality, it is time to discuss applying for accommodations within our BHS. If you know you have a disability or suspect you may have one and feel that you need accommodations, you should request accommodations or services or inquire about being tested for a disability as soon as possible. You can only start receiving accommodations once all the steps are taken and you have been approved, so you should not wait. Accommodations are not retroactive. This means that they cannot be applied to courses you have taken or are currently taking until you go through the process and are approved. The first step is to complete and submit the registration form on the Rutgers website. You must also answer the questions as accurately and thoroughly as possible 
so that the Office of Disability Services can process the request efficiently. Once the form is submitted, you will receive a confirmation email and someone from ODS will contact you typically within three days. You can fill out the form through logging in with or without your Rutgers Net ID. However, if you are a medical student, you must use the form without a Net ID, both of which are shown on this slide. Within the form, there is also a question about your campus. As shown in the slide, always put RVHS even if you are taking classes at Newark, New Brunswick, or another campus. Once someone from ODS contacts you, they will schedule an intake interview. During this interview, ODS will explore your accessibility related needs and discuss how ODS might best assist you in ensuring equal access at Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences. The meeting can take place in person, by Skype, or by phone, and usually takes about 45 minutes. The next step is to submit the appropriate documentation for your disability that demonstrates how your disability impacts a major life activity. We will talk more about documentation guidelines soon. However, you can submit the documentation via email, fax, or by bringing the documentation to the intake interview. After the intake, ODS will consider the information from the interview and the documentation to decide if the requested accommodations are appropriate, reasonable, and supported by the documentation. This information will be presented at a case review meeting as well, consisting of other ODS professionals from Rutgers, where the appropriate accommodations will be determined. If necessary, your program will be consulted to ensure that your accommodations do not alter your program's essential requirements. You will then be informed when a decision has been made. Your accommodation request may be approved, more information may be needed, or the application may not be approved and you will be informed why. More information on applying for accommodations can be found on the Rutgers ODS website and the RVHS ODS Student Handbook. Both of these links have been included at the end of the presentation on slide 16, which is called Rutgers Resources. When you do apply for accommodations, you will need documentation that demonstrates you have a disability and its impact on a major life activity. A combination of the following forms of documentation will help support your accommodation requests. These include a self-report from you, medical and health records, psychoeducation or neuropsychological reports, school records such as an individualized education plan, IEP, or 504 plans, and observations and interactions. Professionally prepared documentation should come from a qualified professional who is licensed or properly credentialed and is relatively recent. It must also include a clear diagnostic statement that identifies the disability and important information about the disability. Documentation should also be thorough enough to demonstrate whether and how a major life activity is substantially impacted by providing a clear sense of the severity, frequency, and pervasiveness of the disability. A description of the expected duration, progression, and stability of your condition should be included as well. This documentation helps ODS understand how the disability may impact you and helps ODS make informed decisions about reasonable accommodations and would facilitate equal access for you in courses, programs, facilities, and activities. However, ODS may substitute another reasonable but appropriate accommodation. ODS also has the right to request additional documentation or deny an accommodation request that is unreasonable or not supported by the documentation. Documentation of a specific disability does not translate directly into a specific accommodation or set of accommodations. Instead, reasonable accommodations are determined on a case-by-case -case and course-by-course -course basis and based upon a deliberative and collaborative process that is responsive to the unique experience of an individual and the unique course and or program the student is enrolled in. You can find more information on documentation guidelines on the RVHS ODS website and the RVHS ODS Student Handbook. Both of these links have been included at the end of the presentation on slide 16 which is called Rutgers Resources. If you already receive accommodations, you need to renew them each semester or term. However, if you are a medical or dental student, you will renew your accommodations yearly. To receive your accommodations every semester or every year, the first step is to request your letter of accommodations 
from the ODS director by contacting the RBHS Office of Disability Services through email or phone. You then privately meet with each of your professors and or school coordinators as appropriate to deliver your letter of accommodations and to discuss your accommodations. However, if you are in the dental school, you will meet with your academic affairs office rather than individual professors. Again, more information on renewing your accommodations can be found on the RBHS ODS website and the RBHS ODS student handbook. Both of these links have been included at the end of the presentation on slide 16, which is called Rutgers Resources. Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences ODS provides many different reasonable accommodations within the classroom or clerkship setting. What exactly is a reasonable accommodation? Reasonable accommodations may include academic adjustments, auxiliary aids such as screen readers, services, or modifications of facilities. Such accommodations will enable a qualified student with a disability to participate in a course, program, facility, activity, or service, and includes adjustments to ensure equal rights and privileges. However, please keep in mind that Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences approved accommodations cannot fundamentally alter the educational program or academic requirements that are essential to a program of study. This means that standards are never lowered and every student still has to meet the same standards of the program or school. Some accommodations are for exams or quizzes, which can include enlarged print, extended time, not using scantrons, and a reduced distraction testing location. Other exam or quiz accommodations include the use of a calculator, screen reader, scribe, computer or laptop, or text reader. Some examples of in-class accommodations include an American Sign Language Interpreter, Communication Aided Real-Time Captioning, or CART, and Note-Taking Assistance. RVHS can also provide assistive technology, such as the use of a digital recorder to record lectures, a screen reader, a smart pen to record lectures and take notes, a text reader, or a FM system in class. Alternative formats for textbooks or course materials are also available to those who qualify for this. Students may receive one or multiple accommodations based on their disability and the impact it has on a major life activity and the academic environment. ODS will work with you and use your documentation along with the intake interview to determine which accommodations are reasonable and appropriate for you. Please note that you will need to apply separately for board or licensing accommodations. Accommodations are not limited to the classroom. Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences also provides many accommodations within the lab or clinical setting for students to ensure equal access. This can include adaptive technology for the lab, such as the use of tablets, recording devices, smart pens, or amplified stethoscope. Other accommodations include an American Sign Language Interpreter, communication-aided real-time captioning, CART, note-taking assistance, height-adjustable tables, or enlarged text and equipment labels. Accommodations can also be used within a clerkship setting. If you have a physical disability and are not able to stand for long periods of time, you may be able to take brief breaks. For example, an accommodation in a lab may be periodical rest breaks. You may also have your clerkship placements in areas that are accessible to you if you qualify for a hardship accommodation. This accommodation can include having a wheelchair accessible field site. Another clerkship accommodation that can be discussed is time allocation for medical appointments related to a medical disability. However, please remember that you will need the proper documentation to demonstrate your need for any of these accommodations without fundamentally altering the clerkship. This slide provides resources through Rutgers University. It includes the Rutgers ODS website, the Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences ODS website, the RBHS ODS student handbook, the RBHS ODS student handbook that was formatted for printing, the Rutgers University Healthcare website, and the Rutgers Graduate School of Applied and Professional Psychology website. This slide includes all the resources for physical disabilities. It has the website links for the Arthritis Foundation, New Jersey's chapter, the Cerebral Palsy League, the Cerebral Palsy of North Jersey, the Muscular Dystrophy Association, the National Multiple Sclerosis Society of New Jersey's Metro Chapter, the Spina Bifida Resource Network, 
and the Christopher and Dana Reeve Paralysis Resource Center. This slide includes all the other resources used within this workshop. It has the website links for the Learning Disabilities Association of America, the Learning Disabilities Association of New Jersey, the National Center for Learning Disabilities, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the Mental Health Association in New Jersey, the Mental Health Resources for College Students, and the Office of Civil Rights Transition Guide for Students with Disabilities. The Guide to Assisting Students with Disabilities, Equal Access in Health Science and Professional Education, edited by Lisa M. Meeks and Neera R. Jane, was also used as a resource for this workshop.